when I go to the lab, I say, you know, this is not just another academic project where writing paper and you know, making discoveries. This is about actually impacting people in the short term. And as an engineer, that's what you're going to do. You're going to solve problems. This is not unsolvable. We just have to get the resources, the collaborations to make it happen. I am Shuvo Roy. I'm a professor of bioengineering and therapeutic sciences at UC San Francisco. And I'm the director of the Kidney Project. The Kidney Project is developing an implantable bioartificial kidney to provide the functions of a healthy transplant for the vast majority of patients who are currently on dialysis. When our bioartificial kidney is ultimately developed, it will allow the patients a number of benefits. First of all, the cells in our device will allow the patients to experience benefits that are similar to a transplant because dialysis does not provide all the benefits of a kidney. It will allow the patients to eat and drink more freely. It will free them from the burden of being tethered to a dialysis machine. It will allow them to travel and because of the cells that are inside the device, they will not require immunosuppressants like transplant patients do today. Our two-stage system uh, consists of a hemofilter and the bioreactor. Now, the hemofilter consists of a membrane that's constructed from silicon wafers that are patterned using sophisticated semiconductor manufacturing techniques to create little fine pores that allow toxins and salts and water to go through but do not let protein go through. Downstream, the bioreactor consists of cells, but the cells are also protected from the patient's bloodstream by the same membrane. So the membrane, again, allows small solutes, sodium, chloride, and whatnot to go through, but do not let proteins, uh, large proteins go through. So the patient's antibodies cannot get to the cells because the silicon membrane acts as a barrier for these large components. And this will be happening all the time so the patient does not have to go into the clinic for any adjustments from day-to-day -day control. And the patient will then be able to live a more normal lifestyle. The cells in the uh, bioreactor kidney will reside in the bioreactor component. The cells can come from three different sources we anticipate. One is cells isolated from cadaver kidneys that could not be transplanted. And that's what we're aiming for now because that's probably the easiest way to show safety and get through the regulatory hurdles. The second is to look at the field of stem cells and use stem cells that can be differentiated into kidney cells and then we can put them into our device. The advantage of that is once you have stem cells, the stem cells can be very prolific, means that they can act very healthy and they will take on the functions of a native kidney in a way a cadaver kidney cells will not. The third source would be from animals that would be implanted to our device, but because it is protected from the patient's immune system, there would not be any, uh, there would not be a need for immunosuppressant between the animal cells and our patients. Animal cells are attractive because presumably you can harvest them from animals uh, readily than, it is, than we might get stem cells or cadaver kidneys. And some animals that have been talked about have been pigs. Now, while we don't do that today, there's a lot of learning we can bring to the table from the field of diabetes. In the field of type 1 diabetes, they've actually investigated the use of insulin producing cells from pigs and using those in human patients. So we'd use a similar strategy, presumably, would isolate the kidney cells from the pig's kidneys, process them in a safe manner, and implant them in our device. Of course, a key part of that overall strategy is to ensure safety so that any viruses or diseases from the pig does not get to the human patient. The device, which will be the size of a coffee cup, we anticipate will be located in the abdomen through a surgical procedure, not very dissimilar to a kidney transplant. So this is how I started thinking about the artificial kidney. 
And you'll see this is supposed to be the hemofiltration unit. This is supposed to be a bioreactor unit. As the technology has improved, we think we can now uh, designing it towards this size. So we've gone from this side. And we think that by the time we get through with other things, we might actually make it even smaller. So these are different design versions. These are all mock-ups. These are all uh, done by rapid prototyping, 3D printing. But this lets us quickly visualize and like surgical experience. So one of the things we're doing now in the preclinical testing is going to test this and say, you know, surgically, does this make sense? The possible maintenance that may be needed is to exchange the filters because they've become gunked up with proteins or the cells are not performing as well as they should. So in that case, we'll need to replace them with new cells. And that could be done through a minimally invasive, even possibly outpatient procedure. We are currently in the preclinical stage of our tests for the artificial kidney. The very first clinical trial will be about safety. We want to make sure our device is first and foremost safe for the patient. So after discussions with a number of stakeholders, including the FDA, we've decided the first clinical trial will be to investigate the blood clotting resistance of our device. So the device must be safe when it's operating with blood. So the first clinical trial will test this after we've completed the animal studies and we get approval for the first clinical trial from the Institutional Review Board and the FDA. We anticipate these clinical trials will start towards the end of 2017 or sometime in early 2018. The first patients will be chosen from a cohort of obviously people that are close to one of the centers where we'll conduct the clinical trials, which will be at UC San Francisco or at, our colleague, at my colleague's place, Vanderbilt University. We currently have a clinical trials interest list. If you have an interest in the clinical trials, you, have, you should get your name on the trials interest list via our website, uh, either on Facebook or through the university, kidney.ucsf.edu. And we will make an announcement to all the people on the clinical trials wait list that we are now going to be recruiting for the first clinical trial. The patients will be selected based on, on their ability to withstand our surgical procedure and the proximity to being monitored by the clinical uh, group that will be conducting the clinical trial. If you'd like to learn more about our project, please check us out on the website kidney.ucsf.edu or you can like our Facebook page Artificial Kidney and you can keep up with the latest advancements and also when you make announcements for clinical trials.